Hi, I'm Richard from Drive Green, and today we're going to be driving the new MG ZS EV. The original ZS EV has been hugely successful, and deservedly so, as it's such a superb value EV. And I'm really excited to see what's different with this latest model, and has there been any improvements? The ZS EV was originally launched in the UK at the end of 2019. It has been very successful and was the fifth best-selling EV in 2020 and the tenth best-selling EV in the UK last year. What has made the MG so popular is it's such a great fit as the affordable family EV. At its price point, there's nothing even close to it in this space. This combination of value and family size practicality has definitely been a very winning formula. But it isn't just its low cost positioning that's made this car so successful. Uh, I know from dealing with many customers, people choose the MG because they actually like it and prefer it as a car, and it suits their needs better. The original ZS EV was, however, far from perfect in my opinion. And whilst it undoubtedly offered great value, its value price point showed itself in some really key areas. It had what I would describe as touches of cheapness. And I'm very pleased to say that this latest model is much improved. Up until fairly recently, the EV market has been really short on truly practically sized family suitable EVs. This is where the MG is brilliant, as it really is a very large car. There's loads of space in the car, particularly in the back, where you've got plenty of headroom and loads of legroom. The seat split and fold, whilst the load area with the seats down isn't completely flat, it nearly is, which is great. And you've got this massive boot as well. Now the higher spec trophy model has got roof bars, so if you put on a roof box, you've got a car that can comfortably do the family holiday as well. Whilst being very similar in overall style, the new ZS EV I think is aesthetically much improved. The MG certainly ticks the box of being a practically sized family car. It still has that same SUV styling and that high seating position, which I know is so popular. However, there's also been some slight aesthetic tweaks, which I think makes the car look more stylish. The front grille looks a lot less fussy, which I think looks a lot smarter. It reminds me of the grille on the new Hyundai Kona. However, I fancy the MG actually looks better thanks to the subtle detailing, as the Kona's grille is just a little bit too plain for my liking. The headlights look sleeker and the colour-coded MG badges on the front and rear are also a nice style touch. I also think the charge flap is better. And there are some new colour options as well. You've got this lovely electric blue colour, which I think is much nicer than the previous sort of baby blue on the original version. There's a new silvery grey colour, which is very smart. And of course, you've still got the white, the black and the burgundy red. Overall, I think the looks of the new ZS EV is much improved. I think it's really nice, and it's certainly as stylish, if not even more so, than some of its obvious competitors. Now, the interior of the new MG is really, really very good. Just like the exterior, it has been improved and it is much more stylish. Now, the interior on the original model always felt quite nice, very well put together, uh, and certainly much better than you would have expected for a, a value price point EV. However, the interior on the newer car takes it to a whole new different level. This is really, really nice. Today, we're driving the high spec trophy model, uh, and the interior is fantastic. You've got these lovely kind of dark gray, plush faux leather seats. They've got this lovely, kind of carbon fibre-esque sort of fabric detailing on it with uh, contrasting red stitching. That's not only on the seats, that's on the dash, the door cards and on the steering wheel as well. The overall effect is it's really, really smart. Now in the new car, you've got a full digital dash display, which is nice and big and really, really good. Ever so crisp, um, displays all the information you need to see nice and clearly, of your energy usage, obviously your speed, predicted miles remaining, uh, and your battery percentage. Very, very good indeed, hard to be better. The infotainment system um, is slick and smooth and quick, really easy to use, um, every bit as impressive and modern as the infotainment system on any car I've recently driven. This is such an improvement 
and this is where you can no longer put the MG behind other EVs in terms of quality. You've got this lovely panoramic fully opening glass sunroof, uh, which is great, a really nice feature even on a premium car, a real rarity on a car at this level. You have USB and USB-C sockets, both front and rear. You've got rear heating vents, and you even get a USB socket by the rear view mirror for a dash cam, which is a really nice touch. Now on the weekend, this car got the teenager test. Uh, I gave my 16-year-old daughter and her friend uh, a lift in the car. And it's very interesting to get the opinion of someone who's got no uh, inbuilt preconceptions uh, about branding or types of car, really knows very little about cars. Um, there's a purity to their comments. Uh, and my daughter was really impressed. She thought this was actually a, a really posh car, which goes to show how nice this interior is. It's also impossible to give a teenager a lift without them playing with the infotainment system. Uh, and the good thing is, uh, it got the seal of approval and she thought it was actually probably the nicest infotainment system of any of the cars I've given her a lift in recently. Being such a great value EV, you might expect the MG to be poorly equipped. However, you couldn't be more wrong, particularly in the higher spec model. Um, there's every item of spec you can possibly think of. Uh, you know, it carries the spec of a much more premium car. There are two key specs. You have the higher spec trophy models, which are basically the equivalent of the previous exclusive trim. And then the lower spec SE model, which is the equivalent of the former Excite trim. Today we're driving the, the higher spec trophy model. And like I say, it's got almost everything you can think of. You've got this panoramic glass sunroof, you've got Android Auto, you've got Apple CarPlay. You've got a great 360 degree camera system, which is possibly one of the best I've ever seen in any car. You've got a nice 3D sound system. You've got adaptive cruise control with lane assist and a host of other driver assistant functions. You've got an electronic handbrake you've got auto hold, you've got these lovely faux leather seats, they're heated, they're electrically adjustable, as are the wing mirrors, um, you've got automatic lights, auto high beams, wireless charging, keyless entry, the list just goes on and on. This would count as a decent spec on a much more expensive car. When you go for the lower spec SE model, you of course do lose the panoramic sunroof, you lose the roof rails, you've got fabric seats instead of the faux leather, the seats are not electrically adjustable, nor are the wing mirrors. Uh, you lose a couple of speakers off the sound system as well, and a, and a few of the driver assistance functions also. Now the SE model is actually a full two and a half thousand pounds cheaper, but it does kind of feel it a little bit. That's not to say it isn't still a high spec car compared to anything else at that kind of price point. However, I must admit, to get the full MG experience and get to enjoy that real value that's quintessential with this car, if you can afford to go for the trophy model, then please do. Because once it's got all that spec on it, um, it's very hard to draw any kind of comparison to this car at this price point. There's also a Trophy Connect model, which is basically the high spec trophy model, but with a live internet facility, which MG call the iSmart system. This gives you in-car internet, you get um, the weather updates, you get live traffic updates, and you also get Amazon Music as well. This is all very nice, uh, but at a price tag of an additional £500, uh, you may question whether it's actually worth it or not for you. Now you can tell driving this car that actually it's a very well put together machine. However, this build quality is also assured by the fact the car carries a full seven year warranty. You know, when you compare that to most European and American manufacturers are still putting three or four years on their cars, this is another real strong selling point for the MG. If you plan to do some long distance driving in your MG, it's got a CCS rapid charging socket which can take up to 75 kilowatts of charge, which means you should be able to get about 120 miles worth of extra driving range in the car for a 30 minute charging stop. Now the original ZS EV had a 45 kilowatt hour battery, which gave you uh, arguably around about sort of 150 miles worth of driving range, depending on your speed and style of driving and the time of year, of course. The newer model now comes in both standard and long range options, which is becoming a common approach now by most EV manufacturers. Now the standard range model's got a 51 kilowatt hour battery, giving you around about 170 miles worth of driving range. 
And despite having more range than the original uh, version, um, the new standard range car is in fact cheaper than its predecessor. Now the longer range model's got a 73 kilowatt hour battery, giving the car a whopping sort of 260 miles worth of driving range, which is great. And that, that aligns the, the, the new ZS EV with any decent long range EV out there. And when you consider the price point of this car, starting at under £30,000 for a long-range model, that is incredibly good value compared to its other sort of 260-mile long-range competitors. When you look at what I would consider to be the obvious direct competition to the ZS EV, which are, for me would be the Hyundai Kona and the Kia e-Niro, um, the ZS uh, has got the range, it's got all the equipment, but at the same time it's thousands, literally thousands of pounds cheaper. That's a very strong, convincing argument in favour of the MG. Uh, Drive-wise, the new MG I fancy is a bit more refined than the original version. It's nice and smooth and effortless like you would expect from an EV. Uh, whilst not being the fastest EV, it's actually still quite zippy and it's even got a sports mode, which is nice. You've got an electronic handbrake, including auto hold. That's a nice feature to have. And the auto hold in the newer version is better than the older one. I felt in the original car, it was perhaps a little bit more clunky, whereas in the new one, it's nice and smooth. Uh, multiple regen settings like you would uh, expect to see, which means you get to enjoy that one pedal driving style, which is so important in EV driving. In terms of overall drive and handling, no complaints there really. You know, it, it's, it's got a little bit of a wobble when you take a corner nice and fast, but that's to be expected because it's quite a high riding car. But overall, yeah, no complaints. This is a perfectly nice, competent, competitive, smooth driving EV. Is there anything I don't like about this car? Well, uh, charging is a little bit of a faff. Um, in order to disconnect your charge lead, you need to do it from the infotainment system, which means you've got to unlock your car, you've got to turn the car on, you've got to wait for the infotainment system to boot up, you've got to then press unlock, to then get out of the car and then disconnect your lead, which is a little bit of a faff. Um, it's a minor thing, really. Uh, it's certainly nothing that seems to bother any Model 3 owners. Uh, but yeah, like I say, it's a little bit faffy. Other than that, there's very little to complain about. I think I'm still guilty of a little bit of brand snobbery and I do very much sort of associate MG as being a, a value brand. You know, this is slightly unfair because yes, it is a good value car, but it's actually a really good quality car. I'm hoping that, you know, MG are gonna to start to gain a little bit of confidence once they realize that actually people are buying their cars, not just because they're low cost, but because they actually like them and they prefer them. And I think once MG have got this confidence and they start producing better and better cars, I think they're going to be a very exciting brand to watch. I must say I'm so impressed with the new MG. It really is a great car. And it's not just about being a low cost, great value car. This car's actually good in every criteria. It looks stylish, it drives well, it's got a great range, a really nice interior, and a fantastic spec level. If you add to this, it's practical family sizing. You've got an incredibly winning combination and this car deserves to be really, really successful. It really is a very hard car to fault and it offers a brilliant value EV proposition. I really am incredibly impressed with it. If you're looking for a feature-packed, family-suitable, great-value electric car, then I think the new MG ZS may well be the perfect EV for you. I hope this video has been useful in helping you learn a little bit more about the MG ZS EV. If you'd like to find out more, or if you'd like to arrange a test drive, please do get in touch. Please be sure also to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can watch our other review videos, and hopefully we can help you find the right EV for you. Thank you ever so much for watching.